Hey guys, Jim here. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. God bless each and every one of you. It's the 13th of May, a little before 4.30 Eastern Time. Uh, in between store trips on my way home from work, I just wanted to make a quick video because there's a good chance I, when I get home, I won't have a chance. So I just felt led today. I mean, it's been, as we're all aware, it's been a pretty insane week, sadly in the nation of Israel because of the rocket attacks that have come from the Gaza Strip in Hamas, from Hamas and Islamic Jihad. Uh, not a coincidence, Monday was Jerusalem Day, which celebrated the, the reunification of East and West Jerusalem in 1967 after the Six Day War. So Monday was Jerusalem Day and tomorrow is a big day as well is the 73rd birthday, 73rd anniversary of the founding of the modern state of Israel, May 14th, 1948, 73 years tomorrow. Um, I've been keeping up, as a lot of you guys have, I'm sure, with what's been happening over there this entire week. Uh, I believe it started on Monday. <clears throat> the rocket attacks, of, you know, there's talk of a possible ground operation into Gaza by the Israeli military. Um, the uh, attacks have been unprecedented, in, if for no other reason, well, just because of the intensity. Uh, they're obviously trying to overwhelm the uh, Iron Dome defense system. And what's more, which I didn't even realize, is that it's the first time rockets have been fired into Jerusalem since 2014, which has been seven years. Uh, I wasn't even aware of that when it started. So it's been a pretty insane week over there. Um, I just want to, if you're seeing this video for the first time, uh, just want to give you the gospel. The gospel is the good news, the good news of Jesus and his power to save. Jesus came to this earth, sent by God the Father, because of his everlasting love for each and every one of us, and for a way to, to reconcile not himself to mankind, but mankind to him through Jesus, by trusting in Jesus. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, Jesus died for the sins of mankind and was raised from the dead according to the scriptures on the third day. Romans 10 2, if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So it's very simple, childlike simple, the Bible says, like the faith of a child. We come to God sometimes at you know, many of us do at the lowest points in our lives in brokenness in humility with nowhere else to turn a lot of times and I did a lot of us in our faith walks have done that we all have a testament and we all have a story to tell and to share and again I don't I'm not one to be sensational at all I obviously don't want to set dates but we're looking at this season that we're in and we have been and those of us who know a thing or two about prophecy so students and teachers of prophecy agree have been in agreement for some time now that there's you know very possibly a connection between 2021 and 2028 and it, i'm going to share today's incidentally tw tram who i follow very closely because of his writings and his studies and articles which are very good uh, posted something today on Facebook. I'll share the link to that. Again, like I mentioned in previous videos, it has to do with the fig tree generation that Jesus talked about, the length of a generation in Psalm 90, verse 10, 70 to 80 years. And uh, <clears throat> the age that Israel is currently is going to be tomorrow on her anniversary, which is 73, which just happens to be seven years from when she'll be 80, which is 2028. But TW goes into that in much more detail. 
in today's article that he wrote and in his previous two, which I've also shared in previous videos. So uh, I just want to, again, encourage you guys. It, it really is, it comes down to something that we all feel in our spirits. And it's not any accident that, you know, and what's, what's happened this week, as sad as it is, and as unfortunate as it is, it's because of Israel, because of what's the violence that has that essentially erupted overnight um, in Israel. And it's, you know, possibly, hopefully not, but possibly going to result in a regional war like they've had before in the past and previous years with Hamas and the Gaza Strip, with Hezbollah and Lebanon. So you have basically the world coming unhinged as we speak just in these first three to four months of this year it's not a coincidence i'm not going to go into any kind of i mean geopolitically everything that's going on has to do with it but we see nations like russia massing a hundred thousand troops on you know the board invading eastern ukraine which started about a month ago we have north korea more so iran and China, China threatening Taiwan, Iran <clears throat> working through its proxies, Hezbollah in Lebanon, uh, Hamas and his Islamic Jihad in the Gaza Strip has nothing, and, and the hypocrisy and the double standard against Israel, and whether it's in the media or, or the United Nations, has always existed, unfortunately and sadly, despite just the anti-semitism and israel is a secular nation and is not perfect just like any other nation is not perfect but it is god's nation and his land and his, and his people not it's not just jewish people that live there there's people of all faiths and nationalities that live in israel that just want to live peacefully and we could go on and on about about you know the decades and centuries old battles and wars that have been going on between Israel and her enemies. But the interesting thing about it is whether it's the Arab you know, War of Independence right after the nation was founded in 1948, Arab-Israeli War in 1948, whether it's the Six Day War in 1967, whether it's the Yom Kippur War in 19. 1973 every time there was a war israel gained land that was no that was not an accident so like the book of genesis says i will bless god says i will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you and with a change in administration here in the united states because of everything we know we go from an administration that is it declared Jerusalem as Israel's eternal capital. That moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. That was a friend to Jerusalem. It was a friend to Israel and the Jews. To another, to an administration that is very much the opposite and doesn't have anything to do with anyone's opinion. It's just the truth. The truth is not subject to anyone's opinion. So none of this is, it's, like I said before, there's a lot of righteous anger amongst those of us that know what's going on, but we also know better because we're surprised, but not surprised. We see everything playing out and we're not surprised because really the stage is continuing to be, to be set like this acceleration and convergence of events, the last six, seven, eight years, which again, for me, this part of my life and ministry started in the summer of 2012 when I felt led to just start to try and sound the alarm, tell people about the good news in, of Jesus and his power to save. Get out there, just not just on social media, like my page, like my Facebook page, which I use mainly for that, but any opportunities in person with anyone, coworkers, friends, loved ones, someone on the street, just to, and I saw God starting to use me to make, a difference and and I know 
that he has started to use all believers for such a time as this, at this time in history in which we find ourselves to make a difference, to reach the lost as many as possible. And so here we are, it's middle of May, 2021. Um, and so again, guys, i um, going to end it here, but once again, press into him daily. He loves you with an everlasting love. Again, the gospel is the, is the good news of Jesus and his power to save. Um, seek him, pray that he, let's say, Holy Spirit, just use me and use us individually and collectively as the body of Christ to make a difference for such a time as this. Because I hope and pray every day that there's an awakening and a revival in this country and around the world. But this tailspin that we've been been in morally, especially as a nation, socially, morally, and spiritually for a long time, may be past the point of no return. I hope and pray that it's not. I hope and pray that there will be a reprieve and that more people will have an opportunity to come to Christ. But we all know what the Bible says about the future. We all know how the story ends. The world's going to be judged. God's going to save, take the church out of history. God's going to intervene in human history by taking the church out, harpazo, <clears throat> out of human history through the rapture. And that could be sooner than any of us think. Um, check out the, the stuff that I share in the description like I usually do. God bless each and every one of you. Keep fighting the good fight. Like I said, press into him daily, seek his face. Just pray that he will that he will use each and every one of us in these last days to make a difference. Occupy and abide until the end. Jesus paid a debt he didn't owe because we all owe a debt we could never pay because of this condition that we were all born into, which is the sinful nature that we all have because of original sin, because of Adam and Eve. But we have that blessed hope that we all look for each and every day as we look up because especially now as we see our redemption drawing near god bless you guys see you soon take care